Woo! What's going on, guys? Norman Swarm coming at you guys today again with another video. Today I'm going to be uh, going on with my series I was talking about, about giving the grades out to the positions. And today I'll be talking about the running backs. Um, got some really nice running back room going on here now in Detroit. Uh, we saw off with running back DeAndre Swift, running back Jamal Williams, running back Jamar Jefferson, who we drafted out of Oregon State, and rookie Rakeem Boyd, undrafted free agent rookie, and another undrafted free agent rookie as well, uh, Diedrich Mills um, out of Nebraska. Um, then I might as well throw in the fullbacks, fullback Nick Bodden, and then fullback Jason Kambinda. Now, I'm going to start from the bottom up. Let's start off with the fullbacks, guys. Uh, we're still up with fullback Nick Bodden, uh, seventh round pick in 2018, 6'3, 245 pounds out of San Diego um, State. He's an Aztec, uh, athletic fullback, pretty versatile. Uh, has played, he can't even play quarterback in college, man. Um, threw like 38 passes, completing 13 of them um, in college, one touchdown, two picks. Uh, became a fullback and then caught like 30 balls in college with a, tu with a touchdown, um, only 47 yards on the ground. Um, comes to the NFL, just can't stay healthy. Hasn't been able to stay healthy. I think he's only been involved in 10 games since 2018 with like four catches and 17 yards. Um, who knows what's going to happen with these two fullbacks. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Then the next fullback is Jason Kambinda. Six foot one, 235 pounds. Played at Penn State. Um, was a former linebacker at Penn State. Uh, they put up some decent numbers as a linebacker. 285 tackles. 17 and a half tackles for loss, seven sacks, a uh, pick, 11 pass to flex, one fumble recovery and two forced fumbles. Um, acquired by the Raiders in 2018. Um, played one year um, at Oak, well, then Oakland. Uh, then he was pretty much released. Lions pick him up and he becomes a fullback and a special teamer. Uh, two catches, like eight yards, zero yards on the ground. Um, hasn't really had any care. I think he had one carry and it was last year and he got stuffed at the line of scrimmage. So. Um, don't really know what's going on, but I'm not. Who knows what they're going to do with with this fullback position and with, with this new regime? I know this. I know the new regime is old school. Dan Campbell's old school, and they want to run the football, right? So um, there could be a possible that they could keep a traditional type uh, fullback on the roster. Um, don't really know yet. You know, we're starting to starting to kind of slowly figure out what this team really wants to do with this roster. You know, they've been kind of. Been kind of leaking stuff out lately about how they want to run their their schemes and stuff like that. So uh, I haven't heard too much about what they want to do with the run game. I know um, Anthony Lynn has talked about some running backs um, and how he wants to kind of like approach that running game, but um, I haven't really heard too much about the fullback situation. Uh, but we'll get to that maybe in a bit. Then we'll and then we'll start off with some. Um, Undrafted free agents that we picked up in 2021. Uh, we picked up Rakeem Boyd, six foot, 210 pounds out of Arkansas, uh, over 2,100 yards on the ground, uh, 5.6 yards per carry, 13 touchdowns, uh, 52 catches, 370, 58 yards, and no touchdowns uh, through the air. Um, I've talked about this kid before when we talked about the undrafted free agents, so I'll kind of just do maybe a little bit of a quick breakdown. Uh, he's a last chance you guy. If you don't know who that is, last chance you was a show on HBO, I believe about about some maybe not really troubled kids, some troubled kids that got in trouble in college through grades, maybe some disciplinary stuff that they did wrong, um, getting arrested or, or just just being kind of a you know um, just a little bit of a, a troublemaker, just a, a little bit, and, or not focusing on your grades as much, and um, had to go to a community college. So. This kid did that. He was talented running back. He started it off as his collegiate career at Texas A&M. Bad grades, got him booted out. Uh, then he went to a community college in Kansas. Went nuts, over 1,200 yards, like 14 touchdowns. Um, got another shot in the FBS. Goes on the play at Arkansas. Carbs out a pretty nice career. Um, dual threat running and catching. He can do a little bit of both. Um, better, better hands than Diedrich Mills, I would say, at, at this point. Plays bigger than he really is. Injuries hurt him as well, though. And um, more of a straight-line guy. He has to clean up some of his issues. Uh, then the other guy we picked up was Diedrich Mills, 5'11", 220-plus pounds um, out of Nebraska. Over 1,900 yards on the ground. Five yards per carry, 25 touchdowns. Caught like 29 passes and for 221 yards and a, and a touchdown. Good size. Has played some fullback before. Guy that another guy that went to Georgia Tech started off his career, kicked off the team for some uh, disciplinary action, 
Um, I think he was violating team rules or something like that. Mul multiple suspensions and ended up getting kicked off. I think I think I ended up getting kicked out of the school um, totally. And then he ended up going to community college. Um, another community college star, over 1,300 yards and 19 touchdowns. And he got another chance to go to the FBS. Went to Nebraska. Had a nice career at Nebraska. Um, looks like he's lost some weight. No, it looks like he's lost some weight, though. He uh, plays at about 215 now. So he was over 220-plus at Nebraska. Willing blocker, good vision, um, not easy to bring down. Strong legs, but upper body isn't a strong. Um, not a clean catcher. Catches more of a, of a body catcher. Willing blocker, though. He's a good blocker because he played some fullback, too, as well. Um, but he was undisciplined at school. Like I said, kicked off. Kicked off the Georgia Tech team. Um, had some fumbling issues earlier in his collegiate career, but kind of cleaned that up as well. Uh, walked around with a football in his hand around the campus. Man, dared anybody to knock it out of his hand. And um, if you ever seen the movie The Program, that's exactly what uh, they did in that movie too. Now, um, I'm going to talk about the, about the kid we drafted, Jamar Jefferson, um, the, who I think will be the number three. Uh, it's 5'10", 217 pounds, one of the bigger running backs on the team. Um, Oregon State Beaver, seventh rounder. Um, over 2,900 yards and uh, 27 touchdowns on the ground. Uh, 43 catches, 299 yards, and two touchdowns in his collegiate career at Oregon State. Uh, should become the number three, like I said. More of a power back with some decent speed, good vision, shifty. Um, has to work on his blocking and cleaner receiving, though. Uh, so some things he needs to really work on. Uh, now there's some... Now there's, there's, the next two guys are the guys that should be the main men. Uh, Jamal Williams, uh, six foot, 213 pounds out of BYU Cougar. Uh, fourth round pick by the Green Bay Packers in 2017. Extremely productive in college. Over 3,900 yards on the ground with like 36 overall touchdowns. Um, on the Green Bay and carved himself out a really nice uh, uh, young career as a backup, pretty much. And um, with around 20 actual starts, 1,900 yards and 10 touchdowns, 122 catches, 90, 961 yards and 8 touchdowns. Does not fumble the football, uh, knock on wood. Um, he's got really good ball skills. He's, he really secures the ball really good. A great character, colorful, always happy, confident, um, leader, energetic, hardworking. It's the type of guy that you literally want in your locker room. This was a great pick. Good blocker too. Will do anything, will do anything for you. Um, on that football field, it seems like I've seen a few interviews of this guy. This guy just seems legit. He's he's very genuine. It's something you like to see, and and, and he means everything. He seems like he means everything. There's nothing really fake about this kid, man. It's just he's just a real dude. Um, I just love this signing, man. Comes from a winning organization too in uh, um, in Green Bay, so <laughs> that that's one thing that you really like, right? Uh, now we're going to talk about DeAndre Swift. I think he'll be the number one guy, though. We'll get to that a little bit. 5'8", 212 pounds, Georgia Bulldog. Second round pick last year, uh, 2020. Versatile running back. He uh, can do, you know, he can run. He can find the holes, ca catch the ball. Really good out of the backfield catching the football. Uh, I, I, I compared this kid to uh, uh, kind of like an Elvin Kamara type running back when he came out. He, he kind of reminds me of him still. Um, now let's just start, start playing like it, right? <laughs> Overall, 2,800 yards um, on the ground, 25 touchdowns, uh, 73 catches, 666 yards, five touchdowns through the air um, at Georgia. Then came to Detroit, like I said, second round. Only started four games last year. Took this old regime forever to get this kid on um, on the field for some reason. He's just coming in, 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 in spurts. Um, even Adrian Peterson made a comment through Twitter or something like that. Like when finally, I think they uh, when they started DeAndre Swift. I think it was against Jacksonville. I can't remember the team. I think it was Jacksonville. And Adrian Peterson is like, it's about time. Like this kid should have been starting a long time ago. Um, so he, like I said, only four games he started, but he, he amassed 520 yards, eight touchdowns, 46 catches, 357 yards, two touchdowns. Um, nice little rookie year. Um, Needs to get better though. Uh, had, had about three fumbles, missed three games, I believe, too, with a concussion. Had a lower leg injury, so he had some issues going on last year. Had a big, big drop against Chicago. I think it was week one. If I, yeah, I think that was week one against Chicago at home. 
dropped it right in the end zone, game winning touchdown. But the kid fought through adversity, man, and didn't let it get to him and played much better down uh, the rest of the year. Now, those are our running backs, guys. Those are our running backs. Now, what is this? I know Anthony Lynn has, has recently came out and said about 1A, 1B guys that he likes, and he labeled Jamal Williams a 1A type player. But it doesn't necessarily mean that Jamal Williams is going to lead the team in in uh, touches. Um, um, I, I, it's just a type of it's just it's just the thing that Anthony Lynn likes to do. He likes to label his his running backs a one A, a one B, a one C. He likes to kind of do that. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean touches are going to go all to Jamal Williams. Though. I just maybe he just finds that he's uh, Jamal Williams a little bit more versatile. Um, but it could lead to more touches. Who really knows? Still got to feel out what's going on in preseason camp. We don't really know just yet, but this is a this is a running back room that I really really like, and this is gonna, this is this is I think an upgrade from last year. Even though Adrian Peterson rushed for like over 700 yards last year, like 10 touchdowns, a lot, I think nine nine of those touchdowns were from inside the five yard line, if I can remember correctly, or maybe all 10 of them were. I know we didn't have a lot of long runs last year. Swift had a couple long runs. Um, Adrian might have had about a 30 or 40 yard run if, if I can remember correctly but um, we didn't have any guys taking it to the house too much uh, but I still like this room now I think it's an upgrade um, I, I like what they did in the draft I love what they did in free agency picking up uh, Jamal Williams um, John Dre Swift in the second year I think it's just only going to get better uh, Jamar Jefferson I feel is going to win that number three spot the kid out of Oregon State and what's going to happen with these with these undrafted free agents? I think one of them is going to go. Um, I think one of them is going to go. And, and if I was to make if I was to make a guess, it, it's really tough, man. I like Raheem Boyd's. I like Raheem Boyd's athletic ability. I like him as a running back a little bit more myself personally. But I wouldn't be shocked if they took Diedrich Mills. And kept DJ Wills on his roster because I think his blocking is going to be very, very important. They just got rid of Carrion Johnson, okay? You got to remember this. Um, Carrion Johnson was, I, I believe, the top running back in the NFL for blocking. Now, the Lions went out and released him, and he was the number one. So they must have some type of confidence in either Diedrich Mills and Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams is a good blocker as well as too. So that could have been the dagger. That could have been the dagger in carry on Johnson getting released by this football team because now we got two guys that can block. And I think Dedrick Mills is a bit bigger than Boyd. Not much, but he's a bit bigger than Boyd. Um, weight wise, anyways. Uh, Boyd's got about an inch on him. It doesn't really matter. Um, I think. I, I just don't really know what they're gonna do. Like, it's hard to pick if they're gonna, if they're gonna. My top three, though, just like this is it: DeAndre, DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams, Jamar Jefferson. I'm gonna say Dedrick Mills, even though I've been kind of saying boy lately, but I think I'm gonna go Mills just because I think he's the better blocker. And then what they're gonna do with these fullbacks is, I don't really know. They could be just dumping both these fullbacks. Uh, Bodden, I think, man, the guy just can't stay healthy. I don't even know how he's still on the team. And uh, Jason Gambinda, you know, he's got some value as a special teamer. Uh, he's versatile, too, as well. He's paid linebacker. You know what I mean? So those type of guys are, are kind of hard to just, just release, those type of guys, because they have so much versatility. Like Gambinda, both sides of the ball. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what this team does. Carrying like five running backs. I know traditionally the Lions have always gone mostly three three running backs and a fullback. Traditionally, but this is a whole different regime. They they could go four. They can go four running backs and a fullback. I'd have five five running backs on the on the roster at once, dressed at once. But that some sometimes that if, if you do stuff like that, that's gonna that's gonna um, take away another position. So if, if, if you want to carry so many uh, cornerbacks or linebackers, it could, it could hurt that as well. So it's going to be really interesting, but I'm going to give this great, this running back room, just these guys right here now that we have on the roster and it's going to be changes. I'm going to give it a B plus. I, I, I'm going to give it a solid B plus. Um, 
just because I really liked DeAndre Swift in year two. I loved the Jamal Williams signing. I think that was a great pick, pick up. And um, I really think Jamar Jefferson is going to be a sneaky, sneaky play for Detroit uh, Lions. Um, DeAndre Swift has some, not, not can't call him injury prone or anything like that. He has not been injury prone, but he's always nicked. There's always something wrong. He's always nicked up. Happened to him kind of in college. Didn't miss a bunch of time in college, but he's always kind of nicked up. Always kind of nicked up. Got nicked up last year, concussed, lower leg injury. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they kept four. They're for sure, I think, going to keep four. You almost have to keep four. Uh, it could be three running backs and a fullback, or it could be just four running backs with guys like Mills and um, Jamal Williams sometimes playing not that fullback role, but that blocking role. You know what I mean? So like the pickups, love the draft, love Swift. It was a solid B-plus from your boy. And um, that's it, man. That was a quick analysis, a 16-minute analysis. <laughs> so thanks for the uh, video, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button on the bottom right. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. Get all my videos and uh, like. Like up the comments and uh, release the comments. You know what I mean? Say the comments, man. I'll come back to you negative or positive. Let's, go. Let's get out of it, guys. Let's go. Go Lions. Boom.